Viridian, The Green Guide by Clouds, My Head in the Clouds Not Coming Down Read by Oak Shadow 5 Chapter 92 Overwhelmed Summary USJ Conclusion Your spider stick is strong enough to hold this guy. I know it is. Kuski tried hard not to sound like he was pleading. I just need someone to hold him. I can get away after that. Really? With two broken legs? A raccoon crossed him skeptically. You know, I'm half tempted to help you just to watch you fail. Not to avenge your brother or anything. Kuski grumbled under his breath. Fine. If I get out, great. And if I don't, you get some entertainment. All while proving to this villains that you're in control and they shouldn't mess with you. It's a win-win for you, all right? Arakuna smirked. Wir? Her hair shot out and Katsuki launched himself away as soon as he felt the numerous weight decrease. He really shouldn't be jostling broken bones like this, but staying where he was would be worse. Flying wasn't as easy as he had anticipated. His balance had been thrown off by both the pain and his useless legs, so he hit the ground far sooner and harder than he anticipated, landing right on his shoulder, which made a suspicious popping sound and caused him to break out again for half a second. Katsuki grit his teeth and waited for the Nomu to attack him again, but nothing happened. He forced himself up on one elbow so he could look around, and the monster was just sitting there, dead-eyed as ever. He didn't even make any move to attack Arakuna as she rejected her hair and rushed back to fight Azawa again, sending a satisfied smirk in Katsuki's direction. He wanted to flip her off, but somehow he suspected it wouldn't have the full impact if he could barely even move. The Nomu must have decided that Katsuki was sufficiently incapacitated, and since Shigaraki hadn't given him any other orders, he was just waiting. It was relieving and creepy at the same time. When Toshinori arrived at the USJ, the students saw him before he saw them. There was a swarm of bees at the front door, just as young Ia had described, so instead of at the entrance, the escaped students had congregated on the side, half hidden in the trees. Over half the students must still be inside, but the rest were gathered and treating each other's injuries as best they could. Todoroki had created a miniature glacier against the side of the building, and Koda stood back, looking upward with a bird on each shoulder toward where Tokoyami and Dark Shadow were perched on the roof next to a section of shattered glass, a handful of other birds suckling them. As Toshinori watched, a gust of wind blew through the hole, carrying Yajirozu with it. Dark Shadow caught her before she flew too far and dropped her onto the glacier, which upon further observation was, more accurately, a slide that allowed young Yajirozu to reach the ground safely where she immediately began creating first aid supplies. He couldn't have taken a moment to be proud of his students, despite the urgency of the situation. All right! Mina called out to him and waved him over, tears in her eyes. You came! Yes, young Ashido, Ahmed smiled. I am here! The best way in and out is through the roof, Teroki reported. According to Koda, the bees at the entrance aren't normal, so we decided it was best to give them a wet berth especially considering that bees had something to do with my father's disappearance. Koda has both taken care of any stray bees that try to block our escape here. Good work! Keep pending evacuation until the other heroes arrive, Ahmed said, popping his knuckles. I'll take care of the rest. We need to get out of here, Minata cried. Sure, we got off that stupid boat, but there's still villains everywhere. Where do you want us to go? Uchako huffed. It's not like we can go out the entrance, not with all those bees blocking the door. What do you want us to do? Just get us out of here, Hinata screamed. Sue smacked him with her tongue. Quiet. Let's go toward the plaza. Maybe some of the other students will be around too. Ushaku nodded. And we can see if Bakugo and Ezra will need any help. Are you crazy? Minata whispered yet, which was a minor improvement. We can't fight the leaders. You're gonna get us killed. We're not gonna fight the leaders. Uchaka insisted. But maybe you can help lighten as it was load a little. They kept low to the ground as they crept around the plaza, and Uchaka had to hold in a whistle as she watched Aizawa fight. He was holding off six villains like it was absolutely nothing, and it was the coolest thing she had ever seen. Someday, she'd be a hero just like that. Mineta let out a squeak beside her, and Uchaka turned to see him covering his mouth in horror as he pointed to something on the ground. I is that Bakugo? She followed his gaze and gasped. Aizawa may have been doing well, but Bakugo sure wasn't. He was moving, but from the grimace on his face, he was in a lot of pain. Before she had time to think, Uchaga was running to him, ignoring the whispered shouts from Tsu and Mineta to be careful. Bakugo? 
She knelt down beside him, winking sympathetically as she took in his injuries. How can I help? I... Bakugo gripped his teeth. I... I think my shoulder's dislocated, so you could pop that into place. I'm fine. Uchako rolled her eyes. You're obviously not. You... She froze as the man villain started speaking, his rasping voice singing chills down her spine. I thought you were cool before, Eraserhead, but this is something else. I'm curious to see how much you can really do. You started fighting even harder when I had your precious little student, so let's give that another try, huh? Nomu! Kill Kachan! Uchako didn't know what to do, but she didn't have time to do anything besides share a terrified glance with Bakugo before there was a rush of wind and dust started flying everywhere. It took a moment to clear, and when it did, Uchako started crying. All Might stood a few feet in front of him, blocking the path of the most terrifying villain she had ever seen, and for the first time ever, he wasn't smiling. I am here to make you pay. All Might, Bakugo yelled. Be careful. These bastards are with the villain factory. The guy you're fighting has multiple quirks. All Might froze for half a second before tightening his grip on the villain. Thanks for the heads up, but young Bakugo. We'll catch them and avenge your friend. Ochoka wasn't sure exactly what all that meant, but the main villain did. He grinned creepily behind the hand on his face. No, change of plans. Kill the symbol of peace. All Might lunged forward to attack the monster, and Ochako figured this was the best chance. Come on. She leaned down and whispered to Bakugo. We gotta get you out of here. I can still fight, Bakugo growled. These bastards need to go down. Just pop my shoulder back in place and I can use my explosions for mobility. Ochako just looked at him in disbelief for a moment, then slapped him. He looked at her in shock and confusion as he started to float. Ochako just grabbed his uninjured arm and started pulling him back towards Sue and Mineta. You're being an idiot, she huffed. I don't argue with idiots. Now, how did Ahmed get in? We may be able to get out the same way. Shota breathed a sigh of relief. As much as he disliked Ahmed on principle, at least the oath had done something right. He knocked the last of the grunts into the fountain and was finally able to charge Shigaraki. I'm gonna make you regret threatening my student like that. Careful, Eraserhead. Shigaraki was fast and dodged his blow. If you care too much, you might just fall apart. Shota only had a split second to wonder what he was talking about before Shigaraki weaved under his capture weapon and grabbed his arm. The timing was terrible and he held out as long as he could, but he had to blink some time. It was the pain that caused him to open his eyes to shoot back open almost immediately, and he jumped back out of Shigaraki's reach. I figured out your tell, Shigaraki said gleefully. Shota stared at his crumbling arm in shock. You're going to have to do better than that if you want to protect your students. Denki counted his classmates for the third time, but still came up with the same number. Nineteen. And no one seen Hagakure? Oh, well, not seen, but... I can't hear her out here, Shoji said. She must still be inside, but there's so much background noise. Thank you, Fran, for a moment, then strengthened up and clenched his fists. I'm gonna go find her. Are you crazy? Mineta screamed. The heroes are coming. Just let them save her. Thirteen is already injured, Dinky pointed out. And even if they can't see her, she's outnumbered. I can't just leave her like that. Bakugo tried to sit up. Then I'm coming with... Uraka shoved him slightly back down. No, you're not. The adrenaline is gonna start wearing off any minute, and what do you do then? Faint in the general direction? Shut up, cheeks! Bakugo growled. Guys, we're wasting time. I'm doing this, and you can't stop me, Denki said, putting his hand on a metal section of the wall and activating his magnetism. Send the heroes away when they arrive. His classmates yelled at him to stop, but Denki ignored them and ran inside. He'd last seen Hagakuri at the entrance, so you should head that way first, but he should activate his quirk just in case he ran into any more of those robot bees. He knew he'd have to be careful passing the plaza, though. He didn't want to end up like Bakugo. Except for then, he actually passed the plaza and saw All Might being pulled through a portal by the weird normal monster that Bakugo had described about, and all rational thought apparently flew out the window. All Might was All Might. He always saved the day and he always won, but Dinky guessed it kind of made sense that things weren't always what they were supposed to be. All Might, who should be strong, was skinny and weak looking in his head, and Izuku, who should be weak because he was quirkless, was one of the strongest people he'd ever met. So, while he was surprised to see Omid in a pinch, 
Dinky took it in stride and didn't let him throw him off too badly. Even heroes needed saving sometimes. Aizawa was too busy fighting the hand guy to help, so Dinky knew he needed to do something. But what could he do? The Numa was trying to pull Omid through a portal, so maybe things would work out if Denki could distract the portal guy? It was worth a shot, at least, and he'd seen something glint like metal underneath that mist earlier, right? Denki took a deep breath and magnetized his arm, reaching out toward Kurgiri. I really hope that's actually metal. There wasn't any more time to worry about it, though, before Kurgiri was flying through the air towards him. He didn't even have time to deactivate his quirk before the guy was barreling into him which meant the villain got the full shock of Kaminara's quirk as soon as they connected, which was enough to make him spasm and lose control of his own quirk. There was a weird squelching sound, and Denki almost threw up as he realized that the pot had closed with the Numu still halfway through it. Had... had he just accidentally killed someone? What if that had been All Might? Enough! Karagiri's voice echoed with anger, and Denki had barely enough time to register the fact that the Numu was regrowing half its body before he was swallowed up by that weird purple mist again. Nuzanzas should be eliminated. Dinky prepped himself for a harsh landing, expecting to be walked back to the mountain zone like last time, but when the mist cleared again, he was submerged in cold water. The villain had teleported him into the flood zone. Dinky tried to gasp on instinct, only to get a lungful of water instead of air and he panicked. His last coherent thought before shouting out was that he really needed to stop activating his quirk whenever things went wrong. Shota would have stopped instead in shock as the Nomo regenerated half its body, but he couldn't afford to take his eyes off Shigaraki even for a moment, not even when none of his idiot students were swapped to God knew where. He hadn't even had a breath to evaluate the damage to his elbow, but he knew it was bad. One wrong move, one blink at the wrong time, and he was just dust, and to top it all off, he was starting to get tired. At least Omad was here now, which meant that the other teachers and heroes were on the way as well. He just had to hold out a little longer. Shigaraki, oddly enough, seemed absolutely delighted that Omid had arrived. See how powerful Nomo's regeneration is? He was designed to beat you at your strongest, All Might. There's no way you can beat this boss. While he was ranting, Shota took a moment to blink and tried to follow up with an attack, but even though he managed to kick Shigaraki in the chest and knock him off balance, he recovered before Shota could restrain him. What was it with his stupid brats that focused on being too quick to catch? First Viridian, now this guy? It was really starting to get annoying. Out of his sight, Ahmed growled. If this monster was created to beat me at my best, then I just have to go beyond that. Plus Ultra! Suddenly, it was like the plaza had been hit with a tornado, and Shota was almost blown off his feet as Ahmed and the Numa exchanged blows. He saw Shigaraki reaching toward him through the clouds of dust, and he braced himself for a counterattack, but before he could do anything... A strong gust of wind and dirt blew straight into his face, and as much as he wanted to, he couldn't stop his body's instinctual reaction. Shota blinked. Nezu led the charge to the plaza as the rest of heroes that called in started spreading out to restrain the villains and look for Hagakuri and Kaminari, who, according to the other students, should be the only two children remaining inside. He could barely see Yagi as he fought with the giant villain faster than the eye could see but Aizawa was looking worse for wear. One of his arms hung limply at his side, and the first thing Nezu saw when he arrived at the plaza was him jumping back from a villain and activating his quirk as blood started flowing down over the entire right side of his face. Nezu signaled to Snipe, who nodded and shot Aizawa's opponent through the shoulder right as Yagi launched his own enemy right through the roof with a crash. Aizawa immediately ran forward with his capture up at the ready, and Yagi turned to him, but instead of allowing himself to be captured, the villain was rapidly being swallowed by the purple mist young Ida had described. Game over? For now? No! Yagi lunged forward, but his hand and Aizawa's cut trap and both closed in empty air as the mist disappeared. Get back here, you cowards! They're gone, oh my. They can't hear you. Aizawa hissed and grabbed his injured arm as he turned to Nezu. The students? All are safe and accounted for, with two exceptions, Nezu answered. One exception, Midnight cut in. Hagakura was treating Thirteen's injuries near the entrance. The villain must not have seen her when he was scaring the other students. Very well, Nezu nodded. Then the only student still missing is young Kaminari. But the villain walked him away, so... Yagi coughed, a drop of blood leaking from the corner of his mouth. So where could he be? 
As soon as the mentors opened an entrance large enough for everyone, Manuel ran straight to the flood zone, expecting a fight, but instead he was met with silence. The entire pool was full of villains who were either unconscious or too dazed to fight, which made his hair stand on end. It was creepy. He shook his head and took a deep breath. It wasn't his job to get creeped out. It was his job to be a hero, and that currently meant saving a bunch of villains from drowning. Sure, from the looks of it, most of them could probably breathe underwater, but they still needed to be taken in and receive medical attention from whatever had knocked them out in the first place. He manipulated the water to wash everyone ashore, and almost dropped a squirk when he realized that one of the bodies was far too young to be one of the villains. Throwing caution to the wind, he threw the rest of the villains to shore with one giant wave and ran to the kid, desperately using his quirk to pull water out of his lungs. How long had he been underwater? No. No, don't do this. Manuel muttered. Don't die on me, kid. I found a student. Just hang in there, kid. Hang in there. Oh my god. What the fuck? Is Denki dying? He short circuited in the flood zone and he fell unconscious and then he breathed in water. And now he's been unconscious for like five minutes or something, which is not good. But anyways, guys, I hope you all enjoyed chapter 92 of Wurden the Green Guide and I'll see you all next time. Bye!